Welcome! Welcome to your favorite Tennessee Titans podcast, Tennessee Titans Weekly. Jacques! Oh! Jacques! Oh! 2 0, folks. 2 0 since 2 what, 2008. Yep. Yep. 2008, man. 2 0. 2 0. 2 0. 2 0. Congratulations to the Tennessee Titans. Um, as we may mention in our preview show, we knew this was not going to be a cakewalk. Right. Jacksonville came in with a game plan, and they did a lot of great things against us. We have some concerns, too, ladies and gentlemen. We really do, and we're going to talk about that during the show. But at the same time, congratulate the team of winning the football game because, again, wins are hard to come by. No matter how you cut it, no matter how you slice it, the Jags are an NFL team just like anybody else, and we came through with the win, man. Exactly, exactly. And to pick it back off what you said, man, I mean, kudos to the Jags. Jags played a, a, a hard-fought game. I see a team in the Jaguars that they were us back in 2017 and in, in, in 20, uh, uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, when we started to build a team where we got a couple of pieces here and there, but we never could get over the hump. You're beating premier teams, but those teams that you know you're not supposed to beat, you end up beating in the teams that you can compete with. You fall, but I mean, it was a well fought, hard game. Uh, shout out to Minshew, shout out to the running back Jones. I mean, it was really a good game. And yep. this, that's like you said on the last show, that's what we said, people. If you watch our show, yep. our show, we said this is not gonna be no cakewalk, dog. Nope. This is not gonna be easy. And, and the Jags, if they keep playing like this, they can be in the mix for eight and eight and seven mm -hmm. and nine. And that's Absolutely. an accomplishment for a Jags team that's historically been bad. Uh, for the past couple of years, minus the, the 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 good defense that they had when they went to the AFC Championship. Right. But what I seen today was a win is a win. We got our win. We got our W. It was rough, but hey, shout out to them boys. Yes, sir. Absolutely, man. And Jacksonville came out fighting. We said that the Jags would as a young team, young wild team that's out there playing free, uh, you know, playing all over the field, and and they did that. They did that against us. And you know, I'm gonna go lie, y'all. We were lucky. I don't yes. care how you cut it. We were yes. lucky. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, we beat them or we should have lost. We won the game, but we were lucky. Right. And, you know, a few bad plays by the Jags themselves. I'm sure Jag fans are shooting themselves in the foot because of the mistakes that they've made on penalties and things like that, right? right. Um, you know, some bad intercept, you know, tip ball interceptions and things of that nature. So, you know, again, much respect to the Jags. Uh, you know, I, the second time we played them, we better be ready. It'll be in Jacksonville. Right. You know what I'm saying? We better be ready. Uh, and everything is the, the Jags play hard, and it's not gonna be no, uh, it, you know, first pick of the draft with Trevor Lawrence. The Jags will win more football. The Jets are terrible, so right. you know, so you have to look at that. You know what I mean? That's that's right. probably his destination is New York. So, it, and this wasn't the Derrick Henry game. <clears throat> this is an unconstitutional thing when we see when Derrick Henry goes off on the Jags. He has historically big games against the Jags. That's right. And this is one of the games where. The Jags don't have Calais Campbell. They don't have Marcel Marcellus Darius. They have just guys. And the linebackers mm -hmm. stepped up, and they were able to put hats on Derek. And, and, and Derek was able to get bust a few runs. But, I mean, he got, what, 84 yards? It's still a good day yes. for a running back to get 84 yards. So, right. I mean, kudos to those guys. So Absolutely, yeah. man. Absolutely. So, Jacques, we won the football game. Again, mm -hmm. congrats, Titans. We're 2-0, right. 1-0 in the division. You know, number one seed in the division, you know, right now the playoffs started today would be in the playoffs, home field advantage, right? right. There's a lot of teams that are not 2-0 right now. But for us, we won the game. What are some of the reasons as to why we won this football game? Well, one reason was Tannehill. Tannehill has been stepping up. I mean, we, we, that's something that was a question mark. You pay Tannehill his money, will he be the Tannehill of, of last year or will he be the Tannehill of when he was with the Dolphins? Now, I know me and you, Hawk, we broke down the Tannehill uh, train of you just don't throw up, wake up throwing 4,000 yards overnight. No, yep. you just don't, okay? So Tannehill showed me today that I have enough confidence when Tannehill has the ball in his hands, we're going to do something great. He yes. was able to march down there and get, uh, uh, what, um, four touchdowns for, I think it was 200 and I think, I want to say 22 yards. Let me check that. 239 yards. 18 yep. and 24, 239, four TDs. Yep. I mean, you, you can't draw it up even any better, right? Facts, no paper. <laughs> That's right. Derrick Henry didn't have a touchdown. So that tells me, hey, we're able to air it out. Um, John New Smith came up big. I mean, he got two touchdowns. Um, Coach CD got involved. <clears throat> Humphreys got involved. So I love how the ball is getting sp uh, spread around equally. Like, there's something that we have, we're have we not really used to, accustomed of just passing the ball. So that tremendously 
helped us actually win the game, literally. So, and of course, play calling helped out on offense. Matter of fact, I feel like this week's play calling is better than last week's play calling when we played the Broncos. Last week was more predictable, uh, more play action. This week, we, 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 we were just more strategic about the play call. And even Cameron Baxson got involved. Um, Shanars Perry got involved. Um, um, Mick Nichols got involved. So it was a very even, even, even line across the board. And I just like how the offense was able to progress. And at the end of the day, Stephen Grakowski did it again. He got the game winner. So yeah. big ups to Grakowski. Then he made a 51 yarder, but missed an uh, extra point. So it was like, eh, but I'm <laughs> definitely. What about you, Hawk? So you spoke on Ryan Tannehill, of course, that he is the reason we won this football game. But more than just say Tannehill, man, is the play of the receivers today. Um, I don't – do we see any drop balls, maybe one by Corey Davis? But, again, that was a great play by the defender uh, on that play. You know, he got his hand in between his arms to, uh, to knock the ball out. But, I mean, you know, you look at the receivers. I mean, the receivers played a heck of a, heck of a game. Um, you know, John New had four catches uh, and, and two touchdowns, ladies and gentlemen. He had two – so if you had him in fantasy football, great job. Um, Humphreys had five catches. Um, touchdown. Perkster, and a touchdown, right. Ferkser yeah. had four catches. Um, Corey Davis had three and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. So it was distributed out very, very well. Um, great job to the wide receivers. Yeah. Um, you know, without A.J. Brown, we still were able to, you know, to manufacture a very good offense. We had a good offense today. Now, there's a few things we're going to talk about on the offense that oh, could man. be better. Oh, man. Right. But I will say overall, hey, we had 33 points, ladies and gentlemen. You don't wake up scoring 33 points on an NFL defense, right? I don't care how bad they are. And so a great job to the receivers in making plays when Ryan Tannehill called their number. When he threw it to them, they caught the ball. Yeah. Tannehill made some pinpoint throws. Uh, you know, again, I like the number of throws he's made, 24 throws and, and four touchdowns. And ladies and gentlemen, who leads the NFL right now in touchdowns, in passing, uh, passing Gardner touchdowns? Minshew Gardner Minshew and Ryan Tannehill. They both have six touchdowns. So awesome job to Ryan Tannehill and no interceptions. Yep. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So Tannehill, again, is playing <laughs> efficient. He keeps playing like this, guys. I'm telling you, we're going far in the playoffs. Yep. So awesome job to our wide receivers, man. An awesome exactly. job, man. Awesome. Exactly. I mean, Hey, as you say, man, facts no paper. Yes, sir. Day. Yes, sir. Me? Yes, so, sir. So, Hulk, we know yes. we won the game. We've had some good reasons of why we won the game. Yep. We still won the game, but we did. there are big concerns, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Don't mean, I mean, but what's what's concerning you, man? What's concerning? You? <sighs> so, it might not be obvious because some fans just look at Derrick Henry getting tackled. Oh, why is he not doing this and doing that? And it is a concern how he's been running of late. You know, I can, I could say 20% of that is that, but I think more than anything is the offensive line, man. Um, the line did not block well at all in the run game. They didn't, there were plays where uh, Derrick Henry would had to fight five people at one time. And it's not like he's a speedster, right? He's a power back. And so he, he gets his best going north and south, not east and west. Mm-hmm. So if you veer that out and there's linemen and deep, deep tackles and linebackers everywhere, he's going to get tackled. I mean, it's just what he's not going to juke anybody. So, you know, yes, Derrick Henry has been running a little sluggish of late. Um, I don't, you know, not maybe his usual self, but I don't know if he even had an opportunity. He didn't, it's like, you know, getting into a car and trying to start your engine. You starting to turn the keys. It's like, well, I, I can't even move the car. The car might be fast, but I'm, cutting on the engine and the engine's not even starting. So the front wall of the offensive line was a concern today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, Derrick Henry had over 80 yards rushing, but I felt it could have been more. Jacksonville, just like Denver, Jacksonville's front four whooped our offensive lines, but, man, they did. And the way, to, the way that the Jags did better this game, and I think against uh, versus Denver, their linebackers blitzed very well. Josh Allen, I mean, he's a beast. Miles Jack is a beast. Those guys were going in there, man, untouched on the blitz. And they were sitting there right there ready to make the tackle. Um, even uh, Jacksonville safeties uh, even came up in on some blitzes. Uh, I even think, uh, you know, one of those, uh, Winger was their leading tackler, the safety, 42, right? He was in the backfield making tackles on Derrick Henry. So, for me, I have other concerns. <laughs> but my main concern was the play of the offensive line in both games on the run blocking. I, y'all guys, I don't know if y'all see that, but it's a problem. And I guarantee you in practice, they're looking at tape like, Guys, we're getting our butts kicked up front. We, we are. It's no question about it. We got to step it up. We got to push these guys back. They're push, we got to push them forward. They're pushing us back, man. I mean, on every play, you just see just like a dead line. It's like, well, who can run through that? Not even a truck can run through that, man. So that's my concern, bro. What about for you, man? So 
my concern, man, is the defense, man. Mike Vrabel calling the defensive play calls. Literally, there was no adjustments. He did a good job last week of adjusting on, uh, doing adjustments on Noah Fant. But this week, man, I mean, playing off covers. The, the first quarter <clears throat> was when we got up to that big league. Now, if this was years in the past when we had Mariota, we would have been in trouble, people. We would have been in trouble because we were one-dimensional. Luckily, we have an offense that can score points now, right? Put up big points at big times, big moments, right? Defensively, man, I, this is the concern that me and Hawk had going into the, the, the season was I don't like my head coach calling my defensive plays. You need to yep. be a head coach versus calling them defensive plays because you're doing a double fold, right? Yep. I need my defensive coordinator to actually concentrate on defense to see what adjustments he needs to make, what, what needs to go down, uh, um, what players need to come out, so, so on and so on. Now, <clears throat> the first, first half, defense was playing being no break as we usually do. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, Gardner Minshew got hot. And I think we was up, what, 21-7? Yes. And I said, okay, hey, we're up 21-7. It shouldn't be no reason why you give him a cushion because with Jacksonville, you give him a cushion, you give him a little rope, they're going to take it, right? Yep. So something that I noticed, there was no adjustments coming in the second half. Nope. We were literally, when I say literally giving them and allowing them space, I mean literally, you turn around. Uh, um, um, Chris Jackson and the DBs and Butlers are playing, what, five yards off from the receivers. Mm, yes. You're like, what are you doing? Why are you making these? I mean, you really don't have to do this. They're not top-notch receivers, which they're good receivers, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Chark, uh, um, LaVishka Chenault, which I'm a big fan of. These are okay receivers. It's not like you're going against Julio Jones or, 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 or Michael Thomas, okay? Mm-hmm. There was no adjustments. I mean, Gardner Minshew was able to come down the field. Defensive line wasn't getting no penetration. There was really no pressure, right? Right. Luckily, when we made, it's a funny story. Me and Hawk was <laughs> on the phone, and Hawk challenged. He said, I challenged the defensive line to stand up and do something. And that's when Big Jeff stood up and did something, right? The problem is, is people, I don't know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen, but we're going to run into a high-power offense, and our, defense, and our defensive backs are going to get torched. Yeah. Do we want to go – do we want to have those problems? Do we want those problems, people? Mm-hmm. I seen something today. I'm like, okay, this is a big concern. This is a huge concern. It just, it just went going into how everything is because we can't – I mean, we're a dominant team on offense, but defense. But we see how much we are miss. Adoree is missed, right? Yep. Luckily, Fulton got an interception, but it was off a tip. It wasn't nothing special. Uh, Vaccaro played a good <clears> game. He played yep. a hell of a game. I mean, Vaccaro surprised me, and I'm proud of Vaccaro. But yep. just it was no adjustments. The defense looked lackluster. Yep. They came out in the second half. Jags was able to march down there. So I just didn't see the energy. The energy wasn't there. The passion wasn't there. And the adjustments wasn't there. So my concern is the defense going forward. I mean, I, I really thought us – and I'm not blaming anything on Clowney because we even said it. Clowney's not a sack artist. Right. Clowney's a run stopper, right? Yep, but Jones was able to. I mean, he he got over hundred yards. And what James, we about James, Rob, about James Robinson. I mean Robinson, my yes, bad. Yeah, right. Robinson. Yeah, one hundred two yards, six yards a carry. Six yards a carry. <sighs> uh, the key to beating the Titans on defense is run the ball. Right, it is. Run the ball and throw it to the tight end. Run the ball and throw it to the tight end. That's how you beat. The that's Titans how you beat the Titans. Yeah, right. Be careful, because you got to be it. real careful. Yep. So that is a humongous concern for me going forward. Hopefully. Bringing back a Dory uh, helps out the secondary. I know, I think Joseph got nicked up there. He got nicked up there a couple of plays, but I think he went right. back out there. But I mean, literally, man, it, Minshew was was balling, dog. He like, was. Dayon got burnt. <laughs> well, not really. Let me say this: not really burnt because he was in good position. But Minshew just threw a good, perfect ball, yeah. a good lob pass, and it was just a good touch on it. So that's my concern going forward. I don't yeah. know how you would adjust. I don't know how it. How would who can step in? Maybe uh, Jim was it Jim Tressel? Yep. Yeah, maybe he can step in because I think he's coached defense before. But um, I just don't know, man. I, I just yeah. I'm not comfortable with it. And what I've seen today, a win is a win, yes. But I want to win with confidence. And yep. this win, I didn't win with confidence. I won with uh, okay, we still won, but still good thing we two and zero um um in the division, but. Yep. Yeah, man, that's that's my concern, dog. Yeah, I understand. I mean, even LaVisca Chenault, the receiver, he was at the seven back. yards, seven yeah. yards a carry. The yes. receiver, right? And we talked about LaVisca being, you know, a bigger receiver. He, you know, right. And he was – hey, they were toasting – but they were looking for Butler, like you said. And, you know, Minshew looked really good. Some of the interceptions that, that happened was just off happenstance. It just wasn't like a straight throw to the DB, you know, right. tip balls and things like that. But 
I'm hey. concerned. I mean, I'm concerned. I'm yes. concerned. Yes. Shark balled out. DJ had a good game. You know what I'm saying? So, Jags fans, if, if any, I know we got a couple of Jags fans that listen to the podcast and watch the channel. Yep. Man, y'all have a good team. Just be patient. Be patient. Y'all have gotten the, as you say, the toxic element out of your organization to where you guys can concentrate and move forward. Be patient. You, your, your time is coming again. But, I mean, like you said, those are legit concerns. Huh? They are. They are, man. They are. So, with this victory, there are players that stand out, of course, right? Uh, every game, there's always one or two players. It's like, man, it wouldn't, if it wasn't for that individual, we wouldn't have won this football game. And the fact that this game was so close, that was the situation, right? One bad play here, we'd have lost this football game, and we'd be only one in the AFC South. So, for this game, who would you say was the player of the game for the Tennessee Titans? So, for me, for the Tennessee Titans, would be Ryan Tannehill. Yes, okay. Yes. And I got, we go back and say 18 to 24, 239, four touchdowns. You can't beat that, dog. Yep. Something that he's, he's showing to me, you got six touchdowns. You lead the, you lead the NFL along with Gardner Minshew and touchdown passes, right? Yep. When is the last time the Titans have had a quarterback that really has been efficient in passing and we led the NFL? I mean, if he keeps playing like this, he's tracking to get 3,000, maybe 4,000 yards if he has any you know, other game. And the thing is, he's, having, he's not having to throw 50 times a game. Now, last right, week he sir. threw. He threw a lot last week, but not that was just like uncharacteristic of him as a Titan. But like every time I've seen <clears throat> Tannehill, he doesn't have to throw a lot. And this is the well balanced offense. When we needed him to take us downfield, he was able to take us downfield. And, 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 and in the red zone, man, we've been in the red zone, what, these past two games, and we're able to come out the red zone with points, right? That's right. That's People, right. I think we maybe punted, what, three times, maybe four, right? Yeah. Yeah. That tells you something. So when your, 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 work, your workhorse, King Henry, is unKing Henry like, but he still got 84 yards. I'm looking for my quarterback, the leader of my team, to bail us out, right? Yep. Years past, that didn't happen. That's right. This time, with we have Tannehill at the helm. It happened. He was a good leader. He came out there and he showed what why we paid him. Facts, and, no paper, no question. <laughs> for me, I mean, it's Tannehill, dog. I mean, I just I, I can't give it to nobody. I mean, he was able to put passes and zip passes where he needed to be. John New will be tracking for a thousand yards the way John New playing as well. Exactly, so, sir. and yes, that's sir. just a big ups to Tannehill. So, man, what about you? So, you know, people always talked about all oh, Ryan Tannehill's overpaid. Now you understand why he's getting paid the way he is. Right? And yet, and still, he's not being overpaid. He's being paid right at the right at the right price at quarterback. You know what I mean? He's doing a heck of a job. And when you look at all the injuries in the NFL, man, right now is a game of attrition. Who can, who can fight to the end to stay healthy, right? I mean, so many injuries today, unbelievable. So I'm, I'm glad, first of all, that Ryan Tanner and everyone is, you know, back for next week, you know, no serious injuries, anything like that. That's my main concern is keeping him healthy because if, you know, our backup situation doesn't look good. So, but for me, the player of the game, he wears number 24. And I'm not talking about Kobe Bryant. We're talking about Kenny Vaccaro, right? Kenny Vaccaro was all over the field. I would say overall, our defense did not play a good game at all. I would give them a D as far as a grade, right? Uh, Bayer did not have a good game. Malcolm Butler did not have a good game at all. Jayon Brown was 50-50. Rashawn Evans didn't really have a good – he did not make a lot of tackles. Uh, Jadavion Clowney didn't make a lot of tackles. Jeffrey Simmons didn't. So, overall, our defense stunk. Chris Jackson was in, right? Mm -hmm. Kenny Vaccaro had 11 tackles, and he had a sack. <laughs> For This is from your safety, your free safety, right? Mm -hmm. Kenny Vaccaro was all over the field. He wasn't missing any tackles. He was at the right coverage. That one play he made towards the end zone when they threw the ball, I think, to Tyler Eifert. Yep. The play he made was the, probably the play of the game defensively, right? Yep. Great job in, in tipping the pass that was coming his way. Kenny Vaccaro played his tail off. He keeps playing like that, man. He's going to be an all-pro ball player, man. To have 11 tackles and a sack as a safety, that, I mean, you, you really can't do That's some Jamal Adams numbers, right? There's nothing else you can really do in that regard. So Kenny Vaccaro saved the game, man. He really did because, you know, even any plays that was deep, I mean, he was always around making a tackle, tipping the ball or whatever, Coming up, making tackles on the running back, James Robinson. Uh, so, Kenny Vaccaro, if, you, if you're watching the show, you played a heck of a game. It is very noticed, man, and it, it's not unnoticed. If it was not for you, we would not have won this football game defensively, you know? Because, right. again, ladies and gentlemen, we get, we've given up. You know, usually we are a bend and don't break defense. We might give up yards and we just hold you here. We hold you. We're not, you know, giving up any points. We gave up 30 points to the Jaguars, bro. 30. We made Gardner Minshew look like John Elway out there, right? So, now, I'm not taking none away from Minshew. Jacques knows that I'm a fan of Gardner Minshew. 
Um, as far as a player, uh, I, I think he has a lot of – to be a – ladies and gentlemen, he's a sixth-round pick. Well, I mean, what else do you expect? I mean, you don't – you can't expect that from him. He's over-exceeding his expectations, right? To the point they might not draft the quarterback, right? Jacks, when you think of the Jags, you think of Gardner Minshew. When you look at who's the face of the franchise, is a sixth-round second-year player. But Kenny Vaccaro, again, did a great job making sure that, though he had 300-some yards, we ain't going to let you go wild for four to five touchdowns. So great job to Kenny Vaccaro. He's my player of the game, man. Right. And even with the defense, the defense is, is winning over the turnover, tur- winning the turnover battle and the turnover differential. Like, literally, like, what we had, what, a, a fumble last week. We had mm-hmm. two – did we have two, two interceptions, interceptions today? Okay. Christian Fulton, one of them. Good job, yeah. Christian. Yeah, the rookie Christian Fulton. So, and it's a tip drill, but you got your yep. first career interception. That's, That's pretty right. dope. We still waiting on the door to, to – well, he's – Harold, he, Harold Landry had the other one. Yes, I mean, Harold Landry. And, and, and that's the thing. If the defense continues to win the turnover differential, it helps us win the game, literally. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's something, like, we've been critical of the defensive and the defense today, but also when they stepped up, when it was time to step up, they stepped up. And they, they stepped did. up big. They did, they did. Jeffrey they did. Simmons, shout out to Jeffrey. I mean, to bat that ball how he did and, and tip it, and then all of a sudden, boom, we got it. It was it was it was amazing. So, man, it, big ups, man, big ups. So yes, sir, yes, sir, absolutely, man, absolutely. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the end of our show. You know, be ready for the Minnesota Vikings game next week. I can't yeah. wait to play the Vikings. They're zero two. They're stumbling and fumbling and having three interceptions and no touchdowns from their franchise QB. Cannot wait. But hey. It, I think it'll be a little simpler next week. Um, just, you know, the Colts got a big win against them. And shout right. out to the Colts. You know what I mean? So, yep. it, it'll, it'll be a lot simpler. But It will. It will, yep. man. It will. So, to you and yours as well, always thank you for, you know, uh, listening in on the show as always. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, as far as email, you can always contact us at TennesseeTitansWeekly at gmail.com. As well on Twitter at TitansWeekly247. And on Instagram at Tennessee Titans Weekly. And also, remember, guys, turn your notification bells on to get all the notifications when you go live and everything like that. And then, hey, remember, like, share, subscribe to your uncle, your cousin, your grandmama, and tell everybody. Tell them all. (laughs) Tell them all. Tell them all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to you and yours, we appreciate it. We will see you some point in time this week for the Vikings game. Tighten up, baby. Tighten up. Good win today. 2-0. We here. We here. Yes, sir.